Trinity Exposed number 32. Who is the Lamb of God? Some more interesting verses to go over here. Genesis chapter 22, verse 7 and 8 says, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Now look at this. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. It does not say God will provide the lamb himself. No, it says God will provide himself a lamb. He is the lamb, in other words. He is providing himself as the lamb. That's what the text is saying there. It's a prophetic uh, statement that, that Abraham is making, that God, you know, the Holy Spirit is making through Abraham about that one day Jesus Christ would come as a lamb to take away the sins of the world and he's going to die and he is God, fully, completely God, not God the Son, right? That appears nowhere in Scripture. Trinitarians have to create these terms to make their little system work, their polytheistic system work. All right? God provides himself a lamb. Revelation chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Wait a second here. Servant of God, God's mentioned, and the song of the Lamb. Two, and yet it says, one, thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. God is mentioned, the Lamb, Jesus Christ is mentioned, and yet one, they're one. Hmm. First Peter chapter 1, verse 17 through 19. And if ye call on the Father, hmm, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. So it was the blood of Christ there as the Lamb, but you call on the Father. Hmm. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Wait a second, no. It says 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, the precious blood of Christ as of a Lamb, without blemish and without spot. Acts 20, 28. God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. You reckon they're the same? The same being? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And 1 Peter 1.17, you call on the Father. Hmm. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. So wait a second here. Who by him do believe in God. Right? Um, who By Jesus you believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory. Well, that's the Father. That your faith and hope might be in God. Huh? How does that make sense? Well, it doesn't if you believe in the Trinity. If you believe in the Godhead, you say, well, yeah, sure. Makes sense. God the Father and Jesus Christ are the same being. Not three separate persons. Not three separate gods. I hope you figured it out by now. 